The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the terrific Tuesday, the December 14th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past hope everyone out there is having a great day hey let's make sure we have an extraordinary one and the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us that's right we do and i make that one little two by four shift well it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us now today you and i we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets we'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During the next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it to Steve at tfnn.com and inside the subject heading please put radio show question of course in our tiger's den will any ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to lush show right now we get all the u.s indices that we track trading to the downside the dow is off 149 points four tenths percent the s p 52 a little over one percent the nasdaq 100 283 one and seven tenths percent russell eight tenths or 18 points semis off 48 trannies down 173 spot politics just slightly above its uh 10 percent uh, one day rate of change that's something we'll watch come day's end silver's back 15 bucks silver i'm sorry silver's back 15 dollars that would be a big move in one day wouldn't it Silver's back uh, 41 cents. Gold is back 15 buckaroonies. Lights we crewed off a buck 10 trade out at 7019. Lay the charge dollar wise, the upside. You got charter communications, two and three quarters percent at 17 points. Regenerant pharmaceuticals about 11 bucks, one and six tenths percent. Dillard's up eight and a half dollars, three and a half percent. GameStop up six. Terminex Global Holdings up six at 17 percent. Google is the leader to the downside, 64 bucks. Adobe's up 55. Amazon 49. Shopify 47. Service now down 40 bucks. So there's certainly things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Although at the moment, we're going to go take a look at what Stevie wants to look at, which I think is what you want to look at. And that's the following. As we take a look at the what price is doing right now, we're looking for anything that shows any kind of a bottom signal. Well, the only thing we take a look at the TAS market profiles, really there will be two things. I should take that back. The two elements would be to take a look at the NQ and the Russell 2000. Why would we do that, Steve Arino? Pretty simple. We're Got the NQ pulling back to a key level of support. In fact, if price closes below 15,721, we should go see the most recent. What the heck did I just do there? Interesting. We should go back to see the most recent lows. Those are the lows from December 3rd, or perhaps lower, the top of its weekly profile. So when you get back to a level of support, and in the case of the Russell 2000, would also be at the bottom of its daily profile, we go take a look at those nine or eight panel charts that I've got out there with intraday time periods looking for some type of signals. So voila, boom. We're going to go do that. So give me a moment here. We'll change screens. And the first thing we'll pull up are the NQ charts. And in the NQ, what we're going to be first looking for are the intraday time periods to try to determine are there any kind of a bottom signal. So we'll start with the most, uh, the the shortest time frame that I've got in this set of panels out here, which is the 30-minute. So on a 30-minute chart here for the NQ, you have both a TD9 count bottom. That formed as we came on the air. Now you've got 20 minutes left in this session. You appear to have a bullish reversal candle. We just won't know until 1.30. But if you did get a bullish reversal candle, you'll have two. That's right. Count them. Two bottoming signals. The Rhodes Mintum indicator signal and a TD9 count. Now, price is going to really need to clear that oscillator and change line uh, to say that there's more rally to come. That oscillator and change line is printed at 15.811. So close about 15811 should suggest a run up to the 15871 15905 
and uh, above that the 16004. But the answer to the question as the daily chart gets down to a level of support, the bottom of its daily profile, we have a bottom signal on a 30 minute chart. We have a TD9 count on the 60 minute chart. We don't have anything on the 120. Bar number eight on the 240. It still would have to form bar number nine. And, uh, and that's it. So two of the five, maybe three of the five, showing bottom signals. In the case of the NQ on a 60 minute chart, its key level of resistance is going to be 15, uh, 15, 859 or so. That would get us right up, in essence, to the top of the 30-minute. Uh, no, I take that back. The center. Okay, that's cool. Now I see the lines on the 30-minute chart. I'm just going to expand them. So here's how you'll know if this is just a counter trend rally. And it will really be the 30-minute chart. So for any of you that are trying intraday charts, this is really important. So the first level that price has to clear is that oscillator and change line. If it doesn't, it's a dangerous uh, thing. It's at least on the 30-minute chart, it would give us a neutral signal. If price clears that, where a counter-trend rally should stop would be the center of its bullish structured profile. So this is assuming no new profile forms between now and then, then as price gets up to that area. So we're going to use the information we have now. 15,905 should be where a counter-trend rally would end. If price gets above that, says, hey, we may have something more than a counter-trend rally. Well, that's 15,905. The 60-minute chart, the oscillator and change line is 15,858. So really right in that general vicinity. And if price can close above that, then that suggests the move into the 16,004. That would take us right up, in essence, into the bottom of the 60-minute profile. So that would be the next level of resistance. And if price goes off 16,004, well, then we do have a change in trend, at least for the 30-minute in a time frame. So now we know that, that there's the possibility of a bottom showing up inside the NQ. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000 and see what it is doing. So as we pull up the eight panel charts here, well, the 30 minute chart for the Russell shows us what? Let's expand this out just a bit. You have a confirmed Rose Mintum indicator bottom signal that was and that was slightly negated. That was negated as we came into the one o'clock time frame. So the Russell for its 30 minute time frame is trying but it's failing. And right now it needs another bullish reversal candle to confirm a 30 minute uh, bottom signal. In the case of the 60 minute, uh, right now it could generate, and this is gonna be not till two o'clock, but just generate a bullish reversal candle. That would be a Rose momentum indicator bottom. It's trying to do the same thing for the 120. The 240 is getting back to a key level of support, 2149. No bottom signal in the five hour chart. So I would say based on looking at these charts, out, there's potential on the Russell 2000, just like there is inside the NQ. I'd be paying more attention to the NQ and it's uh, uh, signals to you and I and as long as we're here versus the Russell 2000 but as long as we're here we've got to go take a look at the other chips now the Dow is the strong one of the uh, four so let's go see what kind of signals it's generating for you and I and so when we take a look at the Dow you can see on the daily time frame I'll just expand the chart out for you price is also testing a key level of support and that is its oscillator and change line that's the green line so price is just below that uh, but if it holds that area uh, that would still be that would keep it in kind of a bullish uh, scenario, so to speak, or at least suggest perhaps another run to the 35,900 level. What happens if price closes above that oscillator and change line, which is currently printing at 35,423? That suggests a further retracement would be likely. And we go take a look at profile levels and so forth. But as we look at its intraday time frame charts, much like the NQ, you have a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that is attempting to form again here inside the uh, Dow Equity Future contract. The clear key level that price needs to close above is 35,420. You've got the same type of signal on the 60 minute chart, nothing on the 120, nothing on the 240, and uh, nothing on the five hour. Now, when I say nothing, I don't. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. Sorry about that. I wasn't paying attention to my clock and just kind of, uh, you know, talked all the way through that uh, commercial out there. What do you think about that? I know the answer to that. That's called not much. So here's what we established during that first segment. We've got the NQ and the Russell 2000 pulling back and testing the bottom of their daily profiles, key level of support, while the Dow, and that's what we've got up on our screen right now, is testing a key level of support, and that's its oscillator and change line for the daily time frame. In all three instances, it's the 30 and 60 minute time frame charts that show us the potential for a bottom out here. Price really needs to clear that red oscillator and change line for there to be any kind of hope to the upside. So now let's go take a look at the uh, final contract, the ES Mini out here, see what kind of signals it has. I don't believe that this is testing any level of support on its daily time frame like the others are. In fact, it's below South Southern Change Line. It is um, got quite a ways to go, 45 uh, 37 to 45 70 I'd say 45 37 is really the bottom of its uh, daily profile so that could be a target but if you look at the 30 minute time frame it has a TD nine count bottom pattern so it's got the TD nine count bottom it's got a roads momentum indicator signal much like the NQ the 60 minute has a TD nine count bottom the uh, 240 is going to be in bar number eight that's a potential so three of the five four, three of the five uh, intraday time periods have potential for that uh, bottom signal out there. So I would still come back to the leader of the pack out here, which would be the NQ. So I'm just going to put those back up on our screen right now, and then we'll go to our first caller. So as we put the, where is it? Here we go. If we put the NQ charts back up here, um, watch that 15809 area. That is its 30 minute oscillator unchanged line. Let's go to our first caller. It's Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Um, thank you, Steve, for taking the call. I was just My wondering, pleasure. Amazon, it looks like it sold off quite a bit, and I just wondered, uh, I was looking to take a position over the next couple of weeks on it, even with, with some long calls or selling some puts, and I just wondered, how would that look to you? Do you think it's uh, uh, bottomed out or further to, 
Or is this a good sure. entry point? Okay, so let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at Amazon. Give me a moment here to switch uh, off of my uh, woman that's running on the beach out there over to our black background chart. So, Ron, let's begin by looking at how what price is doing in relationship to its uh, profile level. So, price is below the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile. This will be day number two below that. So, we'll have to pull up the daily chart, see if there's any kind of a bottom signal here. What this is really suggesting, it appears, so, so price is pulling back with lighter volume. So it's pulling back, in essence, into the swing point that was established here, Ron, on October 29th. There were 6.5 million shares that traded hands that day. Today, we're only at about 1.5 million shares. And there's a swing point, a, a prior swing point. This is from the trading day of December 3rd. That had 4 million shares. We're at 1.5. And, and one would say that a close below 33.38.60 would uh, form an A to B equals CD to the downside. But it's going to be light volume, so I'm not going to go there, even if price does close below 33.38.60. And you're at 33.41 right now. The weekly chart shows that price is potentially at support. It's just b below the bottom of the weekly profile. 33.52 is that number. We're trading at 33.41. So from a profile, so here's what we know from these charts here is on a daily basis, price is pulling back in the case of Amazon with some light volume into a prior swing point area where it did bounce from. So it's got potential to move to the upside. Let's go take a look at this multi-time or let's look at the daily chart. So on the daily chart, the white background chart, that is, I don't have any kind of a signal out here that it's a bottom. So we'd have to be dealing with just simply a, a volume standpoint there. Does that make sense? Uh, so yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> our, our, our decision. So, so I don't have a, I don't have a okay. bottom signal. Yeah, so I don't have a bottom signal on a daily time frame. The only metric that I can use is volume. Um, it, and so, you know, we'd really have to see some type of really bottom signal, I think, on an intraday chart. So we'll go take a look at that. On a weekly time frame out here, we're at a level of support, the bottom of that uh, monthly or weekly profile that is. So let's just go surf around and take a look at the intraday charts. So the 15-minute time frame chart, you have a TD9 count bottom and a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. If price can clear, close above 33.46.90, you should see a move to 33.59.57. If price can close above that, the 15-minute chart will be saying, okay there's more potential to the upside otherwise 33.59.57 is where the counter trend would stop so it's potential there the 30 minute chart a td9 count it could also form a roads momentum indicator signal and if price can close above 33.43 we'll call 33.44 out there that would suggest a further rally and that further rally could take you up to 33.95 so intraday those two charts say yeah there's potential the 65 minute chart shows that price is just dealing with its breakout level at 33.38.60 so if price can regain that 33.68 would be on uh, store the 130 minute chart does not have a bottom signal that we would trade from nor does the 195 minute chart so york so the issue here ron is that on a daily time frame other than coming back to test prior swing points with lighter volume i don't really have a bottom signal and so there could just be just a bit of a counter trend move out here um you know and you're you're asking about trying to trade this for a couple of weeks right that's what I was looking up, thinking, you know, Christmas and so forth. And as much as it's fallen off, I thought that you might uh, start to gain some contraction. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll keep the momentum on the downside. And so if you if you were going to take some type of trade on this, my initial instinct would be to watch the 30 minute and the was it the 65 or was it 15? Now, it's just, it'd be the 30-minute and the 15-minute chart out there. So I don't have a great feel to say that that's a, that that's a great trade just yet. Um, okay. I'd probably feel a little bit better about it if price could clear a key level of resistance. But this is on the 15-minute time frame chart, 33.59. But the reality is when a turn starts, if there's going to be a turn, you see it starting on those intraday time frame charts uh, first. So it's the 15 and the 30 minute that I would be paying attention to. I would also, I suppose, uh, because we're dealing with Amazon, it's one of the top 10 holdings in the NQ out there. Do you do you do you pay attention to the NQ charts at all? The Nasdaq uh, futures so charts? Well, only if I'm involved with them. But I'm, yeah, I, can, I, I watch it along with the others. OK, so I would really so with regard to Amazon, I'd really be paying attention to what's going on inside that NQ, which we covered during that first break out there. And if some of those key levels of counter trend levels fail, I mean, that we should see more rally, then I, then I'd say, OK, then at least you've got the index doing the same, you know, indicating the bottom and you should at least see a bounce out of Amazon. So I think that's how I would view it right now. OK, great. I'll watch the NQ and 
see if the, uh, you said it had a nine count bottom and i'll see if it starts to improve and yeah, and we'll try to take a look at uh, depending on whether it's a call or anything, we'll try to take a look at that to close out the show today. So during that very last two-minute segment, we'll just get a feel for what's transpired between now and then. Okay, Ron? Okay, super. Thank you, sir. Appreciate hey, it. You bet. Always good to talk to you, and happy holidays. That was Ron in uh, Denver. So uh, we do have a couple of questions that have come in, and uh, let's begin taking a look at those. Looks like we've got three questions. So one from Nick. Nick writes, good afternoon, Steve. Do you think we will have a Santa rally. If so, will that start after the Fed meeting? Any comments are appreciated. So, Nick, we've already had, in essence, a, this, what Stevie refers to as the Santa Claus rally. So that Santa Claus rally began when we saw a bottom inside of the Dow. Let me uh, try to get over to a different set of charts out here. Actually, let's go to, yeah, yeah, let's do this here. Let me uh, see. We're going to a break here. I'm just trying to pull up the indice charts. And uh, so the Dow formed that TD nine count bottom. I'll do this when we get back from the break. So, uh, Nick, just uh, hold tight out there. When we come back, we're going to go take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. See Rhodes with TFNN. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So actually, let's do this here. I've got the Dow chart up on our screen. But uh, before I do that, let me do this. 
uh, slideshow from beginning. There we go. And let me just change screens here. Um, where am I on the screens? It's a great question. Uh, this is what I want right here. So I want to just come and answer uh, the question. The question, this is coming from Nick. So Nick is asking, do we think that we'll have a Santa rally? And if so, does it start after tomorrow's uh, Fed meeting? So, Nick, from my standpoint, the actual Santa rally, and what we're looking at here is the annual seasonal cycle for the Dow. And you've seen this chart, or you've probably seen this chart, or many of you that certainly watch this show or segments that I do with Tom, you've certainly seen this ad nauseum, so to speak. But it's really an important chart. And this chart here tells us, Nick, that on average, the Dow forms its bottom in mid-October. And we just use this as a guideline. So for me, that is really when the Santa Claus rally begins. I know that technically in Bloomberg or CNBC, they talk about that just being the week after Christmas. Why would you do that when you know that the market typically makes a pretty significant bottom in October? So I just want to establish that. So knowing that October 13th or thereabouts is when we typically see some type of bottom signal. Now let's go back and take a look at the actual Dow chart. That's not the chart that's up on the screen right now, but it will be momentarily. So knowing that uh, we typically see an October bottom, as we take a look at the cash indice, you can see that this generated, it began generating a Rhodes momentum indicator signal on September 30th. This signal does not get confirmed until we get a bullish reversal candle. Well, voila, you get your bull sash candle on October 5th. So what I can share with you, Nick, is that the so-called Santa Claus rally, this is the way that Stevie takes a look at it, that actually confirmed itself on October 5th. What happened? We saw that rally make its way all the way up to uh, where it formed a top. At first, it formed a TD9 count. That lasted into about a, a three- or four-day uh, decline out here. Uh, that pattern got negated back on the trade day of November 2nd, goes up, makes a second TD9 count top, tops with bar number eight. Moves all the way down, we get bar number nine, and now we saw that rally, which right now has to be termed a counter-trend rally. Why, Stevie? I determined a counter trend rally because price made its way all the way back up to where it had broken down from. And that's based upon the TD9 count signal. So the TD9 count high was 35,952.63. Granted, there was a close slightly above it on December 10th. I believe that was Friday. We have two consecutive closes above resistance to confirm that. It was not confirmed. That was just a one hit wonder. It was just a smidgen. We use these as guideline areas. And basically, now what we've done is we pulled all the way back, Nick, to test that green oscillator and change line. So the oscillator and change line inside the Dow Cash Indice out here, uh, this changed colors uh, three days ago. When it changes colors, it tells us of an impending test. We're getting that test today. Now, a test and rejection, by rejection, I mean a close back above it, would be a bullish signal. Well, okay, it's a bullish signal, but that being said, you know you've got key resistance at 35,952.63. So I want to answer your question this way. First, the Santa Claus rally has already unfolded. Does it go through the end of the year or have the highs been put in? My inclination at this stage here until proven otherwise is the highs for the year are in. And that we could see a decline for a year or two. We'll, we'll kind of come back to that. Now, that doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that we can't take out the highs. But here's the level that you need to watch with regard to how does the Dow respond to Fed, uh, the Fed uh, minutes either tomorrow, the release of the, uh, the, the statement or what takes place during the uh, Q&A period or what takes place on uh, Thursday out here. But the key level that you can see, Nick, that price needs to close above 35, is 35,952.63. If, if price can close above that, then we should at least go back and at least target the all-time high out there. Will it take it out? I don't know. That's a, a key level. That's a key level of resistance. That's the all-time high that we have inside the Dow right now. So I'm answering your question by specifically only looking at the Dow, not the other indices. But if we do take a look at the other indices out here, what we will see is the S&P 500, it still has a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Not until that gets taken out. And all that price is doing today is come back and it's filled that gap. So it's kind of a bullish signal, a slightly bullish signal out here. Nowhere near as bullish as the signal from the Dow. Now, the signal from the Dow is telling me, maybe it's telling you the same thing, that global capital has made its way to the shores. Now, global capital wants to be in very liquid instruments, and they want the trophy horse, so to speak. And that trophy horse is the Dow. It's not the uh, S&P and it's not the NASDAQ. The S&P is basically representing U.S. institutional investing. The Dow is basically, think of it as global. The NASDAQ 100 is really just more, you know, um, more local, so to speak, more day trader type stuff versus uh, the global uh, capital. So uh, 
the Dow is holding up pretty well. And as long as it does that, we may not see a substantial decline to the downside. But you've got valid tops in the Dow, valid top in the S&P 500, Rhodesman Dominicator signal inside the NASDAQ 100. The Russell 2000 was wave number seven. That's letter G as well as a sell the D point out there. Uh, in the case of the semis out here, maybe waiting for the semis, well, they actually still have a Rhodesman Dominicator signal that is in play out here. And they're just trading in a sideways consolidation. I mean, normally we don't go through the indices charts out here but i think that we do in order for me to be able to answer your question out there and um uh so we've got really significant tops that are in place out here granted the typical top formation what did i do delete that son of a gun steve-o uh nick i can't, I can't pull that I, I can't but i'm not going to waste the, the time to do that pulling up that seasonal time frame chart typically the so-called santa claus rally that begins in the middle of october runs out in the first week of january but that may be different this year and uh, the only way that i say it well it's it is different as we speak right now because of the valid topping signals that we have across the board in all of the indices including the new york stock exchange i believe if i pull over the new york stock exchange chart what do we have here? Rhodes Mintum Indicator top, TD9 count bottom. I don't have a reason why price stopped where it did, but it did price below its red oscillator and change line. New York Stock Exchange is saying, hey, I might want to go make a run for that 16096 level out there. So uh, do I think that the I, do I think that we're going to see a further Santa Claus rally? Don't know. I don't know. I'd be watching the Dow. I um, mean, if the Dow can close above 35,952, then yeah, sure. Uh, but otherwise, um, otherwise, I'm leaning towards the fact that the highs for the year are in. So I hope that that helps you out, Nick. I hope I fully explained that. And um, thanks so much for the uh, request. We've got a caller on the line. So let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well, Steve. How are you? Excellent, uh, and uh, thanks for asking. I believe it is Goldilocks that you want to take a look at. So uh, how can I specifically help you? I didn't catch the first segment of the show, so I'm not sure you've already talked about it, but I, I just not. wanted to uh, get your thoughts on it. It looks like we kind of had that big down a couple days. like It was around the third week of November, and from that time, once it you know, came down to a certain level, it's been in this consolidation for a couple of weeks now, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, if you think it's just going to stay that way, if we break either direction, I mean, I'm not sure what you're looking at with it. So great question. Um, and so I want to do two things out here. So first, let's just take a look at this four panel chart, uh, because this helps us understand what's going on from a profile standpoint for the daily, weekly, monthly and quarterly time frame. So on a daily time frame, that's the upper left hand panel. We can see the nice trend lines, the nice rising trend lines that are out there. And each time price pulls back and tests it, it rejects those levels. Additionally, there's the bottom of the daily profile, which is at 1767.90. That has held as well. And then we've got the bottom of the bullish structured weekly profile which is at the uh, 1761 area. Brett, we're about to go to a break, so I'm going to ask you kindly to hold on through the break. But right now, key support is held on the daily and the weekly time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. We'll finish off Take a Look at Gold with Brent in Martinez, California, in just a few. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're looking at the uh, gold contract. I've got my synthetic symbols up here. And so we know that price is pulled back to support. But we also know it's not noted on this chart here. But the day of December 2nd, that uh, was a TD9 count bottom. So we've got support holding. We've got a TD9 count. And price is just consolidating with inside the daily profile, with inside the weekly profile. And uh, so all I know is support has held. Doesn't mean that it can't be broken, you know, tomorrow afternoon and Thursday out here. But right now we know that support has held. Any questions about the black background charts before I flip over to the next set of charts? No, I think that's it. I guess the other thing that I was curious about, if you had anything on the, the charts you're going to go to, anything that might give us some kind of a indication the way it's going to react tomorrow with the, the Fed. You know, Excellent. On the shorter term so, chart. It, it's it's almost Brent as if 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 you and I talked ahead of time and and uh, and we talked about the setup. So that was very smooth how you did that. And so the first thing that I look at here is this chart, which is how is gold trading in the other currencies, looking for some kind of a tell. So we know that gold has held the support of its uh, rising trend lines, termed in terms of U.S. dollars. We take a look at in terms of euros, the same thing out here. So right now. Uh, we know that that trend is held. If we take a look at gold priced in yen, that's pulled back to test its trend line. And price hasn't made its way all the way back in pounds. So so in looking for some type of tell or some type of signal, is, is it going to fail? What I do know is that gold is holding its trend line in these major currencies. Any questions about this set of charts? No, that's helpful. I'm glad you showed this, Steve. Yeah, so that's the potential good news. Now let me share you with the potential bad news out here. The potential bad news comes from the daily time frame chart. It's white background charts. And it really is from the daily. I'm just going to expand out the daily chart. The thing that concerns me about gold, and I'm long gold in many different ways out here, is that see how the oscillator and change line change colors basically on uh, December the 6th out here? That always tells us about a test of that line. Well, in essence, we've seen now three days of testing of that line. And when you test and reject it, a red oscillator and change line tells us the price oscillator is below zero. And when it's below the oscillator and change line tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. And that is a bearish condition out here. So we've got rising trend lines that are holding all the currencies. This is the only chart out here that gives me real pause. Now, it has a valid TD9 count 
bottom out here. Uh, and price is just testing its breakout area of 1773. But if you were to ask me, you know, everything looks pretty good with this right here. This chart right here is the real fly in the financial ointment. Any questions about this chart? No, that's again, thanks, Steve, for showing it. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, and, and with regard to intraday signals, I don't really have anything out here that's going to assist us. So do we have a clear indication as to how gold might trade tomorrow after um, the Fed announcement? I mean, I've shared with you about everything that I would look at. What 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 what's your take? No, I think it's uh, I mean, so far, it's holding support. I mean, it's kind of at a level where you don't have to give it a lot of room, honestly either going to work or it's not going to so for yes. me personally i would be going more on the bullish side of things taking the yes. chance that we're going to get a bounce out of here and get above that line it's going to continue upward you know, whether that's actually going to happen or not remains to be seen but that would be I more know. my tendency looking at the way things are set up at this point Yes, I, and, and I agree with you. And it's just the daily chart that we were looking at that gives me some pause out there. I would feel so much better if price had taken out that red oscillator and change line. Uh, what we do know is that uh, oftentimes there's some fireworks. You know, there's a big move to one side and then a reversal. Uh, and especially we see that oftentimes in, in gold out there. So I, the only, th I, the only thing I want to caution, not you, Brent, but anybody else that was listening in, where you say you may not have to give it much room. And, and that's true. Uh, it's just you could put a real tight stop in there and get stopped out pretty quick, but yet still be on the right side of the trade just because of the volatility that tends to take place shortly after the release of the minutes or certainly during uh, Powell's uh, Q&A period out there. But I agree with you. All the signals, with the exception of one point, two, we should see a move higher out there. And you know what? Um, well, we'll know it in about 25 hours from now. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> If you get a chance, Steve, I know, of course, we've been watching this VIX, and it's back and forth and above and below the 50-day. Yes. I know we're above it again today, and there's a chance we could even do over 10% on the, you know, the percentage yes. of the move. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, a lot of things going on, no doubt, to be watching, and you know, we'll see how it all plays out. But I appreciate yeah. your help so much. Just have yourself a great day and a, and a great week. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California. We had a question inside the Tiger's Den from uh, Mr. Bill, I believe it was, or I think it was Mr. Bill, was asking me to pull up the uh, the ratio chart between the XLY and the XLP, and that's the bottom panel. And as uh, and what he was looking for is some kind of diverging pattern, uh, because this gives us some type of signal. And, and I've got a couple of those diverging patterns out here on the chart, uh, each of those that uh, led to some type of decline. Well, Mr. Bill, when I take a look at right now what I've got out here, I don't have that same divergent signal. So let me get a red line so we can draw that in. So I don't see it because what I see out here is the high. Now, we're just looking on the closing basis. The close on November 1st, that's the uh, ratio, was 2.89. Uh, the close on uh, November 15th, 2.93. So the question is, do we see, uh, and, and what's the signal out here, two point, and this is, we're taking a look at the S&P 500 um, index. Uh, what, uh, oh, I, I'm sorry, I was, uh, so, yeah, so I, I don't, you know, I, I see that the signal shows moving higher, yet here we've got, in essence, price just moving sideways. Whoops, that didn't work out there, right? So we don't really have that type of divergence that typically is associated with a uh, pullback out there. So I don't know if you're seeing something different or you just asked me to pull up the chart because it's easy for me and I've got that ratio. But I don't see that type of divergence that usually is associated with a significant top out there. So thanks for asking me to pull that up because I hadn't looked at it. I'm sitting here telling you that I think the highs for the year may be in. Maybe that chart is saying, hey, Steve-O doesn't know what in the heck he's talking about. Uh, let's go to a next caller, which is John in uh, Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Uh, and I know you want to uh, supplement uh, the discussion that Brent and I were having on gold. So please have at it. Yes. Uh, good. Uh, good afternoon, Steve. Thanks for taking the call. And Absolutely. yes, merely a supplement, very brief. Everything you and uh, Brent just discussed about the gold market makes good sense to me. I think you identified all the relevant parameters. The one thing I just add to that that I didn't hear you two uh, speak of out loud, yes. although I know you're thinking about it, Steve, is that the last uh, uh, Federal Open Market Committee meeting 
concluded on Wednesday, November 3rd. Today's, uh, tomorrow's uh, meeting concludes, what, that's going to be December 15th. Yes. So if you look back on your daily charts, you will see yep. that yep. Uh, Dece Gold made a pullback low, maybe it was even February, no, it was Dece Gold, and bottomed, I think, exactly on November 3rd, just before the FOMC. It did. And then, of course, it took off like a rocket ship. Um, I just share that. I make no predictions. I do find all this very interesting, however, and uh, thanks for you and Brent discussing uh, all that in detail. And we love what you just added. So thank you for calling in and sharing that with us. That was John in Philly. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, folks. We'll be back in uh, just a few to wrap things up. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value billable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. So as a quick update, we've got the uh, we know that the four 30 minute time frame charts and the equity future contracts were giving us bottoming signals. Now, three of the four of them still have those signals. Uh, that is the ES, the NQ and the YM. Those are Rhodes momentum indicator signals. There's also TD nine counts for the ES and the NQ. The Russell 2000, that bottom signal has failed at this stage of the game. You like to see everything kind of sync up here. So maybe the market, if it's going to bounce, is waiting for the Russell 2000 to get its mojo. But the one thing that's really important here is that 
that. See, price never took out that oscillator and change line. Now, it's not a guarantee that if price closes above that, that we're off to the races. It is a guarantee that if we don't close above it, that we don't have any kind of confirmed bottom in there. So continue to pay attention to those oscillator and change line levels. Let's go out to uh, Rich, uh, who's on the phone, who wants to take a look at uh, MUX, I believe. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing really good, Steve. How about yourself? Very good. Thanks for asking. So it's McEwen Mining. Uh, we've got about a Correct. minute here. Tell me what I can help you with, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, I know Tom feels that the, the the metal markets are ready to kind of do some kind of rebound. And I've followed McEwen, and it looks to me, I don't know, is it, you know, you're buying a falling knife here, or do we really kind of maybe finally have some sort of settlement here? Earlier in the year, it was settling out around this, you know, 90 cents a level, and now it's around 86 cents. And the volume is drying up. And I just was asking, uh, you know, with your tools that you use, what does McEwen look like to you? Well, uh, what you would hope for, if you like the number nine, then uh, today okay. has the potential for a bottom inside of McEwen Mining. That is daily time frame chart. So today is going to be bar number nine of a TD9 count. If a TD9 count is going to identify a top or a bottom, that bottom should occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So you could still see a lower low tomorrow, but you do have a valid bottoming pattern that is forming. When this topped rich back here on the trading day of October 15th, it was a TD9 count that did it. So maybe you're going to get a TD9 <laughs> count bottom tomorrow sometime. My apology, we're out of time out there, but I at least wanted Not to get problem, to you. Appreciate that. Thanks so much. Steve. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Have a great day. Folks, stay tuned for uh, David White, the Power Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home from 3 to 4. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.